Hey guys, it's Jen. Um, just wanted to uh, get on and say hi uh, to you guys and let you hear my voice again. It's been a really long time. I uh, wanted to jump on and explain some stuff and um, let you know what kind of projects I'm working on lately and just kind of um, where I've been and what I've been um, up to and going through uh, mentally and uh, just wanting to check in and, and see how you guys are doing. Um, I'm going to be showing you physically up close the things that I have um, prepared in my Etsy shop. It is now open and I'm selling um, my own little packs of um, ephemera, printed ephemera. And I have um, a Halloween set and um, I have a, like a folksy kind of set of classic artwork and some kind of Victorian uh, costumes. Uh, but I wanted to explain a little bit b the story behind all this stuff and kind of give an explanation of um, where I'm at right now with the with the products and the prices and things. Um, but so first I'm going to clear off my table here and I'm just going to kind of casually flip through my current journals and just kind of explain to you um, what I've been uh, going through and what's been going on with me. And um, so just wanted to remind you guys that I'm calling these my little envelope junk journals. Uh, I started to get into these at the end of last year. Um, I really like these and I'll explain how it ties into my personality and my mental health soon. Um, but these are, I'm calling these my little envelope junk journals. Um, so. Uh, my idea is to go back through all of my photos that I have buried and try to go and print like one topic at a time in the pictures and then dedicate um, an envelope junk journal to those pictures. So they might be really repetitive, but the pictures have different expressions on the kids' faces and I really want to capture that. Um, so it take it doesn't take very long to fill in these um, envelope junk journals you can see they're kind of thin um, and so you can fill it up in no time flat and um, fill it with uh, pictures that you've printed and um, so I, I'll just kind of tell the story of how this um, ties in um, to my personality and everything so um, so I'll just flip through casually and, and kind of talk um, Growing up, um, I uh, experienced, um, like a lot of people, some childhood trauma, um, and that has developed a um, who I am, basically, and how I respond to the world, and um, what I think about the world, uh, my perspective, my view, my outlook, how I frame the world, and my interactions, and what happens. Um, I am pretty 110% confident that I grew up with a family member who unfortunately had borderline personality disorder. And this is a very common um, psychological disorder that comes after a serious uh, childhood trauma like uh, molestation or physical child abuse. Um, I had clues that this family member did experience very, very se severe um, physical violence um, when she was a child. So she developed this, these traits, these personality traits of borderline personality. Um, and so I'm not going to go into details on how I know that this person has, has it or what this person did or any actions or anything towards me, but I'm just going to tell you how it's affected me and my life. So um, I'm not sure if I've developed um, BPD myself, but I, I do know that I, I am a childhood trauma survivor and that I have an inner child um, that is still there and still responds to situations as if I was a child, a scared child, basically. Um, 
a lot of people have a bad rap towards um, folks with borderline personality disorder. There's a there's different types of um, people with BPD. And if you're curious, you can um, look up the full like diagnosis um, on the computer because I'm like really nervous and I can't remember everything off the top of my head. Um, and I actually do have a master's in clinical psychology, which is which is kind of you know. Um, it's surprising that I can't just rattle off the diagnosis to you right now because. Because it is kind of personally affects me, um, and uh, I think that's why I got a master's in psychology because I just uh, didn't understand what was going on when I was growing up, and I didn't understand the adults around me and why they acted a certain way. Um, but anyway, some of the things that I do um, in my um, daily life, or you know, before today, I mean. Sorry, I'm just like so nervous. Um, <laughs> so as I've become an adult, I have had a hard time like maintaining a job or employment. Um, and this has been a really um, sensitive topic for me, especially, um, you know, you hear of like millennials having like problems with um, paying back like student loans and and um, a hard time like finding jobs um, that that you know can help you live and have a living wage like our parents did um, so it's a very sensitive topic to me because I like I said I went to graduate school um, passed was in honor society I've given um, presentations um, in front of like tons of people um, especially like military and soldiers and I was I've been able to do some really you know ugh, like scary stuff nerve-wracking stuff um, I got myself through it um, but when it comes to like self-confidence in interactions with other people that's where I start to have a really hard time um, I can't deal with confrontation I you know if I if someone's upset around me um, or they say something like a joke or they get kind of like huffy or like an attitude or something i just go in total um fight or flight or freeze mode and i totally um tense up and i, I just can't handle confrontation i i can't handle it and i handle it like i did when i was a child and that's what a lot of people do that have had childhood trauma is they were never taught ways to work through um, conflict and disagreements and confrontations, normal human, you know, um, interactions. Um, so if I feel like um, somebody is upset with me or something, I just go into escape mode. Um, or, or it's the other side where it's like totally angry, like totally just violently angry. So it's a really black or white thing. Um, so that's some, something um, of my personality. And um, let me try to think. Um, I should have written out notes. Um, Another thing is perceptions of, of, you know, if, okay, so this is a really good example. Like if, if, you know, someone, um, usually says hi to me, but then this time they didn't say hi, or if, you know, a person usually, you know, gives me a thumbs up on posts and then they didn't one day, I will attribute that immediately to a dark place that I'm unlovable, unlikable, I'm horrible, I'm not good enough. Um, and I will just, all the memories of my childhood will just flood in all at once, you know, and it's, it's just so painful. It's so, so, so painful. I can't explain to you how painful it is um, to have like depression and anxiety um, in, related to this uh, stuff. 
Um, so that's that's one um, thing that's that's big. Um, yeah, any a anxiety is a big one too. Um, you know, fearing that something bad is going to happen. Um, so <laughs> I'm just rambling and I'm not remembering all my thoughts. I really should have written this down first. Uh, oh, okay. That's another thing is, um, a lack of feeling an identity. Um, that's a big one. That's a, who am I? Who am I? I don't know who I am. I don't know what I like. Um, am I this? Am I that? Do I like this? Do I like to do this kind of art? Like, and I'll use the example of Instagram and YouTube. You can go to somebody's feed and you can see that they, they have this one thing, this one niche that they do and they do it all the time. It's like an everyday practice and it's their thing, you know? And I just like, how, how do people do the same thing over and over again? You know, that's not me. And that's something that I have felt really bad about is me not being able to commit to something. Um, and so that's a really big um, thing in uh, borderline personality is not knowing who you are um, and tr trying to fit into these different identities. Maybe I should do that. So uh, for an example, when I decided to come back and you know try to be crafty again and things calm down at home with my mental health, I, you know, was watching Johanna Clough videos and cause she always inspires me to like, you know, work, like get to work immediately, do some journaling, you know? And so I say, okay, I'm going to build a journal and I can do it. I can build a hardcover journal. Um, but I lost steam, you know, I made the covers and I didn't fill them. I just wasn't motivated. It, it wasn't me, you know? Um, it's just not my style. So I can appreciate other people, the beauty in what other people do, but if I try to, to do it myself, it doesn't feel natural. So I had to stop myself and say, no, I need to go where my energy is and I need to, you know, this is from um, Lydia. This is great. This uh, little paint card she sent me because I was part of her Patreon and she sends little envelopes with tons of stuff in it and she made these um, paint cards it, with the with these little things on it and so I kind of uh, made a collage out of my daughter she's holding a sparkler there I don't know if you can tell um, so so anyway that's that's another thing is like who are you you don't have an identity you don't know what you want to do with your life okay I'm 39 okay <laughs> Like, it's still, you know, it's still like, okay, what am I going to do in the future? Who am I? What am I? Okay. And um, I got a master's in psychology, but it's not truly what I wanted to do. Um, my generation was, and I don't know if this is true for everybody, but my, the people, the adults around me, you can do anything. Um, you can be a doctor and I want you to, you know, buy me a beach house and a um, Ferrari and you can do anything and you just have to go to college. You just have to go to college. And it's like it glamorized blue collar work over, uh, you know, the crafts, the arts and crafts, the labor, you know, the plumber, the construction worker, you know, it, it just, it demonized that, vilified that, you know, like that's dirty or, or that kind of thing. So it was very much like you need to find a job where, um, you're going to make a lot of money. <clears throat> but in college, because of the childhood trauma and the difficulty with, you know, knowing who you are and what your personality is, um, I was raised to be a certain way, very authoritarian, you know, and, you it, like there, the arts was not um, the arts was not a good thing when I was growing up. I knew I was creative. I did these weird, funky, creative things, and I loved it. And I was happy when I did it. And I had energy behind it. It was fun. Um, one example, and I, I'm gonna get to that where all this like you know printing comes from and like arranging and uh, curating and stuff where that comes from. But when I was little, um, I went to a, fan, a, a an adult that I grew up with um, business 
And what I did, I was so bored, I went around and I interviewed the people that worked there and I put together, I hand wrote out a newspaper <laughs> and made copies of it. Um, and I loved it. And I was like really little. I don't even know, maybe eight years old or something. I loved making copies of this newspaper. I published something that was my own. And, and um, the other example is a, another family member um, to do business. Um, the family member was a business owner. We had, um, she had ac access to a computer, a desktop, and um, she had a program called Print Shop, and I will never forget it. I absolutely loved using this program. It was loaded with graphics and clip art and fonts, and you could make brochures. I know it sounds so stupid right now because we have all these tools, you know, to do that, but you, you can make a poster, you can make, um, brochures letters like stationery with borders and stuff and i loved playing with it absolutely loved it i had a um a senior um halloween party actually this um and it was like an alcohol free it was such a like everybody was laughing about it it was it, but it was adorable i made this like half sheet like invite and I made it like in this, this print shop program. I was so happy it had little pumpkins and it was like in like Smashing Pumpkins font, like senior party, end of the year party, like no alcohol, you know, but there was a DJ there. And, and like some of my friends came, like they actually came to it, but that was the best thing about it was the fact that I like made my own invite. So that's what I had energy behind and I wish that when I was growing up that was supported you know in my family um because then and, and if and if it was pointed out and it was reinforced and it was um like nurtured like a garden wow what could I have done like wow like you know what what things could I have done if I went and studied graphic design you know like <laughs> that that would be my dream job going back if I could do it all over again so anyway i don't even know where i was going with that um but yeah so here i am 39 and um i'm gravitating towards those things that i have energy behind so go going back to the um the journal cover that's just not what i have energy over having a big book a journal is exciting to people but to me it's completely overwhelming and I think that's another thing with borderline personality is we get bored like very easily. Um, and like the sustained attention is, is not, you know, for at least for me, it's not possible. So going, so bringing it back to the, the junk journals, I love these small journals, these small mini size journals. Th you know, this, a spread like this takes seconds, you know, and I literally have a few bags of scraps put it on, put it on, staple it on, boom, paint markers, done, you know? Um, so, I mean, basically, if you can print your your pictures, you can do a really quick spread. So these were made out of real um, junk mail envelopes, but um, I'm actually experimenting with um, larger envelopes. Um, so, Anyway, I'll, I'll get to that soon. Going back, um, social media was getting really difficult for me um, on Instagram because if you have borderline personality disorder, you your voice and your individuality and who you are and your identity is like drown, drowning out by these other creators and artists. And it's not their fault, but you, you look and you compare yourself constantly, constantly. like oh, well, wow, they really make this beautiful thing and they, they, they do it consistently and every day like a practice. Why can't I be like that? Why can't I make art look like this person? Um, and, you know, oh, I'm not getting as many likes and not enough engagement and things like that. And, and the other thing is when you growing, when you grow up and you, you are basically told your real self is not good enough. Your real self is not doable in society. Like you won't be able to support yourself with who you really are. You, you instantly think you're bad and you're unlovable. 
you know, when you get triggered, if, if you're not getting enough likes or comments or something. It goes back to those things of I'm not good enough, you know, there's something wrong with who I am, basically. So it was constantly, um, and, and then taking in so much content and feeling like I had to be on there for hours, like four, and I was seeing the reports on my um, iPhone, oh, you've spent seven hours today, you know, on Instagram. And my kids are at home doing homeschool. And it's like, I don't want them to see me online like all freaking day. You know, what am I teaching them? I, I don't want them to be on social media until they're basically in college. And even then I'm gonna say it's not mentally healthy for you. It's been proven, you know, that it's, it's unhealthy. With the social media, you, if there's lots of documentaries on um, Facebook and, and social media and how bad it is for you, it reinforcement schedule to it. So like every four posts you see, you get a hit, like when you're scrolling, you get a hit, hit of dopamine, like, ooh, like, like that's visually beautiful. That like tingles my brain. Maybe this is how it is for Instagram. Um, and um, you know, so you get reinforced to keep doing it and keep doing it so it's like a drug. Um, but it's crazy because at the same time it's giving you um, apparently dopamine. It's also very depressing. It leads to really depressing thoughts. And especially if you're on Facebook and, and you also see like horrible news or controversial news or news that makes you upset, that is still reinforcing in a way. It makes you continuing to scroll. So I, and you know, when I got into kind of like a, um, I had a close friend and like I was just having problems like oh you're not liking my stuff enough and and so it was causing problems so I totally um, disconnected and so that's where I've been okay the, the whole time so I, I stopped the media and I focused on my kids I started painting um, <clears throat> I was making like kind of folk art for a long time and it actually I'm now converting uh, some of the things I painted into like a graphic um, so that was cool but another sad thing that happened um, in the springtime was that um, I I hadn't seen my a, a family member in a long time I'm close with and we grew up together and what I'm realizing now is that we have different triggers for different things like something like some piece of news or some cultural phenomenon or um, like uh, maybe um, something a behavior in each other that we do or a look or a huff and puff or whatever triggers us differently so I'll get triggered and then she'll get triggered and when I talk about triggered I'm not trying to be funny like it, when you have trauma in your childhood or any time before Triggers are real things that induce physical responses in you. You you feel if you've had trauma, you will start to shake. You will, um, or you'll be immobilized, or you will be, um, uh, you will go into fight mode. Well, you're you'll start yelling, and and you can't handle it. You just like, I it's like I couldn't handle me, my my response. You know. Um, all the memories flood in of of everything like bad things that happened to you when you were a kid you were a kid and then all those messages you've been told and you've told yourself all your life i'm bad i'm horrible why can't i deal with this conflict like an adult why can't i be an adult why can't i'm not a grown-up why can't i be a grown-up why can't i get along with people you know th that kind of thing so you know so we've been um, apart for a long time and haven't talked for a long time and we love each other very much and we're, like we're so close but it's like <clears throat> I just I've kind of closed myself off from a lot like everybody because it's just it was a horrible time um, I wasn't on medication it's just been a, a tough time where I don't want to get triggered it's painful it's painful to get triggered it really is okay um, so so anyway um what happened was i um so one night i woke up oh God, i don't have anything else to show you guys <laughs> i'll just go through through this um so this i was going to show you this is an example of these new envelopes that i found and i'll go get i have piles of them but 
so you can see the the journals are a little larger so this would be like if you're going to get a junk mail envelope and th this is these awesome envelopes i found they are literally like this size basically a little smaller um but here you see that i got a big vellum one and there's their side uh side opening um oh this is the one that i got paint on i might do a giveaway with this one because i <laughs> I got paint on here, but um, so yeah, anyway, here's a black one. It's really big. It's so cool. This is, it's like a really cool texture too. And I bet a chalk paint or a white um, uniball pen would look awesome on, on this black. Um, so, uh, so anyway, I, um, I was on like Zoloft um, for the past few years. Um, I wasn't on any medication like as a young adult, but I did start to have problems and um, I had a job on an army post um, and my colleague was very like um, hostile acting towards me and like because I can't deal with conflict, it was that fight or flight response where it was either like I just like told like my boss like just let it all rip, you know, rip out like she's difficult, like she's hovering over me, she's in my business. Um, and then one night I just had to leave. I just like packed, I, my husband and I like showed up to the office late at night, packed up my stuff and like took off because it was such a triggering, physically painful, stomach cramp, hyperventilating feeling going in every morning, just feelings of doom. And the good people there, it just wasn't enough to calm, calm my nerves. So um, what happened was I wasn't able to sleep because I was worried about the next day. So um, and insomnia was a big thing when I was a young adult. So I got on a like lorazepam or something and was on that for a while. But then eventually um, we went overseas to South Korea and then I didn't I didn't need any any of that medication. I slept fine. Um, then. Um, after I had my first baby, I had um, post-traumatic stress disorder because, um, well, I guess, I don't know, I probably would have gotten it anyway if this didn't happen, but um, we, we were separated like after I had my um, first son, like that's a whole nother story in and of itself. But um, we were separated for two weeks and I couldn't see him. Um, because he was in a NICU at a foreign hospital. He left the military hospital, went to a foreign one, and my tailbone was like fractured. I'm pretty confident, so I couldn't even barely walk. I was like a hunchback and I couldn't sit in a car f for a three round, three hour round trip to go see him. So needless to say, I had um, post-traumatic, or no, um, postpartum, disorder and so tons of sadness so that's how I got on Zoloft and been taking that for a long time it and I was like it's not good enough it's not working it's not stopping um, these anxiety this anxiety and the the um, like hatred the self-hatred I have for myself um, so yeah with the, the the quarantine and everything and like not like not being able to take the kids anywhere and just such guilt feelings and self-hatred feelings just got so bad um but what happened was i started right i was riding my bike with my kids and i started to um feel weird like my heart started to feel weird i was having like palpitations and like points when i couldn't breathe and then i felt like i was having an out-of-body experience um like i wasn't in my body okay and so when I got home, I'm like, I'm tingling. My, my chin is tingling and that's my sign of, oh my God, I'm, I'm having a panic attack. Um, this is my, um, the soft and femme art. And I think these are super cute. These are totally open source and um, like classic art pieces, but I thought they were so, so pretty um, that they would go in really nice in a, um, a journal. Um, the pieces are really pretty. I'll just go through these while I talk. Um, so that was a sign that I, oh my gosh, I'm not feeling good. I'm starting to have panic, you know, I'm starting to feel panicky. Um, so yeah, so after we came back from visiting my sister and I had a, a falling out, um, you know, maybe a couple weeks passed 
and um, I was looking at Instagram and I saw a post where a woman uh, was talking about how her husband had to be rushed to the hospital um, and then a couple day and she and I was looking at the post because I really like her clothes and her flea market stuff that she finds and you're looking at these posts and you're looking in real time her husband dies her husband ends up dying like a few days later and apparently um he had like diabetes that he never knew he had and it was untreated and and so that was leading to like heart problems that night and i without even really realizing it that night i had cycling in, um, panic attacks which i've never had before and um, if you don't know what a panic attack feels like, what it feels like is basically you feel like calling 911. Like that's the sign, like you're having a panic attack, you know. Um, it, of course, it could be like a real heart attack, <laughs> you know, like something's wrong. Like you, you know, you feel like you're gonna die. You're tingly all over your body. Your body starts to go numb. Your chest is tight. Um, and you're having pains on, on your chest, like like you would be having a heart attack. So I kept getting up and getting dressed because I was like, kept coming close to call, like telling my husband, oh, we have to go to the hospital. Um, but I would say, no, no, I, it's not that, it's a panic attack, it has to be, it has to be. And so I would kind of calm down again and I would lay down and I would try to go to sleep and it cycled it did this three times, it happened three times. So I said, the first thing I'm gonna do in the morning um, is I'm gonna go to the doctor. So I didn't sleep at all, you know, and that's that's just, I have a serious problem with, with sleeping because of, you know, you're constantly thinking, you're alone with your thoughts, basically. I, I have trouble sleeping. So if you are one of those people who has to watch YouTube at night, like me, um, or look at you know, like scroll Instagram what you're doing is you're quieting your mind and you're not letting anything else come into your mind and you're you're hoping to fall asleep um, because I don't want to be left with my thoughts of, of worry and like self you know deprecating statements and things like that um, so anyway <laughs> anyway couldn't sleep I don't know where I was going with that couldn't sleep, went to my urgent care doctor and they, you know, strapped me up again to the machine. I can't remember right now what it's called to see if I had a heart attack. And she said, look, you're, you, you know, you're not having a heart attack. And she's like, you have serious anxiety. She said, next time that happens, you definitely need to call 911. I'm, you know what? I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> I, I've done this so many times where it's like I know at this point it's it's a panic attack and like the cost like just telling someone oh yeah just call an EMT like are you kidding me in this day and age like really like the money alone that's like terrifying but um, anyway um, so this is the summer state ephemera um, and just to take a pause from the story time um, I guess I'll eventually get to this, you know, why I, I'm doing this, but um, this printer, I invested in a really nice printer um, that is like rate, super high rated for printing um, art. So the colors are beautiful in this. If you ever have trouble um, printing at home, um, you know, um, it, and the colors don't come out exactly like you want, like you can definitely like just order these and, and they come out pretty good. I don't know if you can see them with the lighting right now. I don't know if it's good or not, but um, I'm still figuring out the lighting situation. Um, and if you ever want me to print out things for you, um, I can do that too. And I, um, yeah, I can do that too. If you send me the files, I can print everything and protect it in plastic and put it in a nice um, envelope. So um, anyway, um, I, the way my insurance is worked out, I couldn't go to this doctor to get um, a certain schedule of medications that she thought that I, I needed to get. Um, I could only continue to get my Zoloft from her, but she said, yeah, you totally need to get like some Xanax and I can't give it to you. So 
luckily I found a um, doctor's office and um, I met a nurse practitioner there and I just freaking absolutely love her and she just listens to me and she basically I learned that it's okay for you to tell her or you know hey this medicine is not working for me and I need to do something else like that's really empowering I never really realized that I just thought like you know the doctor's an authority figure you just listen to them and if you have a problem with what they say then oh you must be like a druggie or <laughs> something's wrong with me if I don't like like what they say and so she's like not at all not at all so I was able to get um, some Xanax and that helped like tremendously um, stopping the panic attacks like totally um, and she prescribed basically some some things like um, Wellbutrin and it like kept me up all night and like I didn't get sleep for two nights in a row so I couldn't do that so she did a lot of adjusting um, of my medication and basically I have found a really good I mean it's not perfect but it's a good combination so far and I'm actually able to sleep like I, that is just like going like walking to your room and actually being excited actually being literally excited that you are going to sleep like i can't explain like how that feels like you know like any normal person would be like yeah it's not that exciting like it's not that happy it's just so re i'm just so calm now because i know for a fact once i lie down i actually can watch like a little bit of youtube and get tired like in like 45 minutes or so you know if i go to bed at like 11 o'clock I'll, I'll be asleep by midnight and i will sleep pretty good so i have that sleep medication and i have an antidepressant um that i've never taken before um and then i have the i actually did ask her to have well butrin back and so that's been helpful that's been giving me some energy um it's not helping me like it's not like stopping me from eating a lot but it is like like wellbutrin it's known to like um be a, like an appetite suppressant which it really was when i was taking it raw like so to say so to say speak but um yeah so now with this um combination uh, i'm able to like stop eating like overeating but it's not like it's a total appetite suppressant um so yeah like i've gained weight you know since like 2016 and like then on, like just kept you know gaining it yeah i feel like i don't feel that great being like a little overweight but by gosh like i feel like so much better like i know i still need to do therapy and that's a whole nother story um i need to add that that needs to be the additional thing to do of course um, but at least I can sleep now and what ha what's happening with the perceptual issues is that um, I'm not triggered like I'm not triggered by by shit on Instagram I'm just not like if you if you don't like something if you don't you're not commenting on mine it's like fine whatever like I I'm not spending like four hours on Instagram like anymore I, I check it briefly here and there and I stay on it when I post and because I like to respond and and tell like show people I appreciate them taking time out to be so kind in looking at not only looking but like actually typing something in like believe me even that is like a lot of work for a lot of people and I'm now realizing that so yeah i'll engage there and then i'll check in the evening to try to you know and i i check the people that i'm really close to i check theirs and you know i'll uplift them or whatever so so anyway um that's where i am now and i'm going to be running out of battery soon um but yeah i just wanted to show you let you know what's going on um with these 
journals, um, when I'm done with them, I want to make a huge like cover to like house them all. And like, it's going to be really wide. I like, that's my dream for these, but it would have to wait until I fill them up. But it's so satisfying knowing that, um, you know, you have a little journal, it, it's cute on the outside and you're filling it up, you know? So yeah, that's reinforcing and it's like a little bit of work. So I think you're more likely to stick to it if it's like really small. Um, but I'm making these bigger covers. I think I made them way too big, but um, <laughs> the idea was it was gonna be this size to accommodate the envelopes. Um, but I gave myself extra room just in case like stuff wasn't straight enough, but I ended up like putting art on the whole thing. But yeah, the idea is I hope to um, fill these up with the big envelopes and some painted papers. So that's a plan. Um, I still have two of these available on, on a post on my Instagram. And um, if you really want this and you, you don't have the cash for it right now, like you could even like reserve it or pay partial, you can do that. Like I'm totally open to that. Um, another thing I'm learning um, through doing this and coming back is I really oh okay so sorry I need to tie this all back to, to what I'm doing and why I'm doing all of this so I'm listening to myself I'm trying to listen to myself and and say okay what are you interested in okay so going back to like the print shop print shop program and, and like I used to like go on the internet and try to find pictures of like smashing pumpkins and and like made a scrapbook with that and stuff um, so that's what I like. I like finding images and I like making things out of those images. I know it, so it sounds weird, but like somebody already made the image and then like you're compiling it. And, but so, but like, I know I can draw and stuff and I even have a, a tablet and stuff, but it's just like, I don't need to do it right now. I just don't need it right now. I will hopefully in the future like start to make my own doodles and stuff but right now there's just so much like available and so many talented people that have made things so with these all of these pieces come from different artists um and i'm able to use these images commercially because i pay for a license so what i did was i collected so i think of the theme and I collect, I find my images and I pick a color palette and I will um, pick, you know, which color everything is. And so like I've balanced the color out and um, I know I already showed you this one. Which one haven't I showed you yet? The Halloween one, okay. So um, this was a scan from a piece of fat, my own fabric. So I mix it up with stuff that I've made from little elements and um, things that already exist. So like this cat image, like this is a vintage um, cat image from like a greeting card. And um, I found a shape, um, picked the color of the shape, stuck the cat on there. Um, these little um, sentiments were pieces of fabric that I owned and so I made the rectangle, made it white, decided it's going to be white, made the black part and then put an outline on it. Um, and so, so these right here are like open source images, you've probably already seen them. But the cool, the thing is, I guess I um, think that I'm like, I consider myself a designer, you know, a designer of like ephemera packs, I guess. Um, this, uh, yeah, this was made from a ton of different elements. So this was one element and then I chose the colors on it. This cat was an element and I chose the colors. I even hid things that were on the cat that I didn't like. Um, this was an this was an element. I added two of them upside down. The scallops. I built the scallops myself because I didn't have access to like scallops. So <laughs> this was a bigger thing, and I shrunk it down. It, you, so like it's it's cool. It's all, actually it also like works my brain out like a puzzle too. Um, this was its own um, element. The spider was an element. Um, this little border was an element on its own and I got to pick the colors for that. This is a different element. Then I added the rectangles around it. Um, this is an old image. 
um, this was a border. So I added this little border image and then I added a rectangle here and then another. So it does take a lot of work, a lot of thinking and a lot of coordination and a lot of clicking and moving and cutting and pasting and that kind of thing. So like, I really do think this does like, I mean, I don't know, like, I don't know if you want to call it art or if you think I'm like lifting stuff from other people, but I think that's what graphic designers are is, and I'm not professionally trained, but I think they take existing clip art and they make, you know, new items with it. So like flyers or marketing materials, things like that. This was old. Um, in this Halloween pack, I didn't just include Halloween related things. I added, you know, things that have um, purple in it, but are not necessarily Halloween. Um, so that you have a range, you don't have to just, to it, your journal doesn't have to be totally like Halloween related, but it's, you know, fall, like, I guess it could be, but it's all coordinated. So anyway, I'm blabbing now. Um, let me just show you guys the envelopes. So these are these big, okay, I'm not 45 minutes. These are these big envelopes I was telling you guys about. And this is a beautiful, oh my God, I just love this. This is vellum, and this was the most expensive pack. But look how long that is. It measures, I think, almost 12 inches wide. Um, that's the most expensive out of the bunch. And then there's this bright pink, bright green, um, bright orange. I mean, I know they're really bright, but once you put them next to like a black, you know, you have like a Halloween, you know, color. It kind of calms the, the stuff down. That goes good. Um, but I also do have white. white. Um, this is craft paper envelopes. And um, this is blue. And then I have this turquoise. I want to still order purple. But please let me know in the comments if you think it's a good idea to um, resell like a variety pack. Because you can't get these like in lower um amounts are pretty expensive buying like the packs so let me know if you want me to do like a variety pack um if you want to make your own, own um let me know if you want me to do a variety pack so you can make your own envelope junk journals and i can make yeah i can do that and then it'll be simple and like more affordable you'll be able to experiment with it and see if you like it so, um, yeah, that's, um, yeah, I just wanted to show you um, what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And you also get a little mystery gift pack with your orders. And just wanted to try to show you the print quality. Oh, so in the initial phases of this, I'm discovering that I'm using a lot of images and therefore it's taking a really long time to make the actual die cut ephemera pieces. Oh, look at the vivid color in this. I don't, I hope, I really hope it's, I hope it's working. Um, it's, it's expensive. You might look at the prices and think, oh, that's expensive. I can't do that. Especially the Halloween pack. It's because there's so many pages of Im images that I, included in the future i will try to pare down more but it's very hard for me because i'm a maximal a maximalist and i don't like that i like to have so many things um <laughs> but so it takes an hour to put this together the halloween one and so the other ones range in time and if I want, so that's the whole, the whole point of me talking to you today and talking about my personality and my mental health. If you think about your personality and what you're successful at and what reinforces you to keep doing something and what you have energy behind, that's what you need to be doing. And so if I can't get a normal, regular job out in the real world, because I can't manage conflict right now, because I'm, I'm not mentally able to do that, let me do something that I am good at, that I enjoy and makes me happy. And I will keep doing it and I'll keep trying to get better at it. Um, but I feel like I should be compensated for that work if I'm gonna continue to do it. Like this is my calling, this is my career, this is what I should be doing. 
Um, so I'm not going to do what a lot of people do and what I did do starting out when you don't know what anything costs, you don't know how much time you spent doing something and just put out a random number or compare your prices to other people. So that's, that's why some of these are expensive, um, especially the Halloween ephemera pack. But if you order this in a pack, printed pages, it's cheaper because it took less time to do, to produce. Um, so in the future, I'm gonna be playing with different sizes of packs. Right now, the Folktastic is the smallest one I have, and so that's like the, the least expensive one I have. Um, but anyway, that's my future plan to try to pare down things. Um, so that's just an explanation behind um, the products that I have right now. Um, and I think it's almost time to get my kiddos. And um, I want to say thank you for welcoming me back so warmly and so lovingly. And um, another thing with my personality is when people say things about me, I, I don't take them in. I don't sit with them. I don't believe them. Um, but you know what? I have the rest of my life to work on that. So, and I'm, I'm going to, so, <laughs> but I just want to thank everybody's support and stuff like that. And, um, just take care of yourself like I'm trying to do, please. And, um, that's all I have for you today. And I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it wasn't too upsetting. Um, but I love you guys and, and thanks again for supporting me.